to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ebro in the Morning. Laura Styles out on that maternity leave. Shout out to Mama Styles. See you soon. Uh, we in the holiday spirit. We got Rosenberg. And we got to say Merry Christmas to today's guest, Chance the Rapper. Yeah! yeah. My dogs. Yo, Chance, my. Captain Christmas in the building. I'm here, yo. I wish I had some sleigh bells. <laughs> Wait, so this album, though, that's out, Merry Christmas, Little Mama, the gift that keeps yeah. on giving, that was that was out on the, 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 inter, the interwebs a few yeah. years ago. Like a mixtape circuit, a little classic. Yeah. I did my thing, got that joint cleared, used the lawyers, you know. <laughs> Finally, after four years, the tracks is up, and uh, I'm proud, man. We're both proud. Jeremiah's proud too. I just saw him yesterday. Uh, uh, spe speaking of, hey, uh, how's he doing? Yeah, yeah, he's doing very well. He's uh, he's still recovering, but uh, it was uh, it was a really really deep thing to get to see him. I hadn't I haven't seen him in uh, almost a month now. Maybe yeah, maybe about a month. The last time I saw him was November 11th. And we were working on uh, part three. We, you know, we did two Christmas tapes before this one. We were working on number three, and um, and then he just got really, really sick, and uh, it was bad, man. He was, uh, but he's good now. And we met up yesterday. We shot a little thing for this virtual concert that I'm shooting, and uh, I kicked it for a second, and it was very like, uh, what's the word, like. Um, inspiring or encouraging or just like and emotional i'm sure yeah and i i got out all the like thug tears and shit so i wasn't like it wasn't bad like that but it was more like the real thing was that he hasn't he hadn't sang in a while so we we like getting together and just hearing him sing and seeing everybody's confidence just went up like he's you know he's a very very singular talented artist and then he's just like one of a kind dude so like just getting to see him back in the saddle was just a it was a very cool cool moment that i think i needed to see so did, it, did it play out like you guys saw each other and you're doing work and then you hear that and then he tells you that he tested positive and like did you have to run and go get tested and was there all like scares around it too basically there was a big thing where we you know we were going to the studio and then uh, a bunch of people in a in a session that we that we were all in, like uh, two engineers and a couple of people that were from Jay's camp, all basically came down with COVID, and so everybody in the building had to shut down the studio for two days, and then uh, everybody went and got tested. Uh, we didn't. I didn't know that Jay had COVID though until I think like a week later. It wasn't oh. until he was in the hospital because I think he got a couple negative tests too. And uh, also when he first got COVID, we didn't know that it was going to be as serious as it was. He was. Yeah, that's the part. Like it's well, at first it was just yeah. like he tested positive. He's going to be, you know. Well, like the thing that people botch with the COVID thing, we're all still figuring it out in many ways because it's hard to grasp. As you get exposed and then over the course of like three to seven five days, days or five yeah, days is an incubator yeah. period so you could get exposed go get tested the next day joint come up negative yeah as that th as a, this virus sets into your system you know my brother going through a whole thing right now where he got the tracheotomy he was on the ventilator mm -hmm. he's he can't even move his limbs right now you know fever still spiking and all that did did uh did this make COVID more real for you? Because I know a lot a lot of people struggle with you know Definitely. understanding the what was really going on with this thing. Definitely, my I mean, Jeremiah is like one of my best friends outside of just the music stuff. And when I've you know like he's I think three years older than me, and I would have never thought that he was going to you know get the kind of sick that he got. It's like you said, he's on, he was on the ventilator, he had the trach, he had, you know, he was on life support, he was having, you know, and I'm not really trying to go through his medical history. Right, 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 right. But it, thing, it, it gets but it crazy like, fast. It was, it was really, really scary for me. I really, we really were fearful. And I feel like 
it was the most scared I ever been like beyond just, so you're right. Yeah. As soon as that stuff happened, it was like, I was very, very worried about him. And then even once he was stable, it was kind of like, and to, and to right now it's just been a very, like, you know, I can't get sick. I got kids too. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, it's just scary. It's, 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 it's actually crazy. Just, I think also like, like you said, like there's so many things that we don't know about it. You think it doesn't, affect young people the same way it affects older people but like i said i'm 27 i think jay's like 31 or maybe 32 so i felt like i didn't think that it was going to get him the way that it did um do you um have you changed your movements what have you changed about how you moving around after this because i know look and, I, and i'm going back to it because I, and i'm gonna tell you why there's a lot of people that's like, yo, they don't got it in Atlanta. They must have, you know, cracking these jokes, you know, or he got Miami. it in Atlanta. And I'm like, yo, fam, there's people that got it and they not talking about it. Straight up. The the biggest thing that I've changed is I don't see my I don't see my family like that. Cause you know, through the pandemic, I wasn't seeing people like that anyway. Definitely not like my friends and stuff. And so uh I was still like, you know, I was still trying to go see my parents or still, you know, go to the the stew and not, you know, have the mask on and stuff. And I'm very, very like, I don't really play about that stuff anymore just because it is so serious. And I, like I said, I got to be around for my kids. I can't. It's it's the, the real thing, I think, also is like I've heard that COVID like exposes underlying like yeah. issues that you yeah. might have that, and just like super advances them. So some that might not normally bother you until like your forties or fifties, like COVID gonna make you talk about that right now. Like, so I don't know what underlying stuff I might have going on. I'm not necessarily Do you have asthma by chance? Hmm? Do you have asthma or anything like that? No, I used to have bronchitis when I was a kid. But that's what I'm saying. Who knows? Maybe I do have asthma. It's like right, I'm not right. trying to find out via COVID. You know what No, I mean? that's like, not the way anyone wants to find out about anything. And I've been really frustrated to see that particularly in the, in the hip-hop world, entertainment in general, but obviously I'm most focused on hip-hop. It just seems like, um, especially in L.A., but in Atlanta too and Miami, like people are partying. Like people Jersey really too, are bro. partying. Jersey too. And Jersey too. Yeah. Jersey. New York, uptown, everywhere, bro. Like, Chicago. It's people still doing parties in Chicago. I, I think it's... I don't even want to hear you come out and say, by the way, this is what's going to annoy me the most. We get to June, the vaccine's out, and everyone's like, oh, my God, so happy to be back outside. Motherfucker, you've been outside the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I was. we were just talking about it yesterday. I feel like it's also like... We, we, in terms of like media and stuff, like, I, I think it's, it's easier for like you guys because you guys can interview people and still like stay right. in the home. Mm -hmm. But like, I have friends, like, a lot of my friends are in like the dance world, you know what I mean? And they like, they make dance videos every day, you know what I'm saying? So, like, they can't, <laughs> we were joking about it. We were like, I don't think these niggas can afford to cover up their face. Like, they're trying to build their profile. So, they're like <laughs> dancing outside every day. And they got to have their faces out because that's how they get their followers. I guess. I really don't know what it is. but No, it is a money thing. Like, look, yeah. um, you know, Ashanti, you know, had the, they had the Keisha Cole verses they was plotting. Ashanti was in South Africa. I'm sure she got a booking. Like, you know, Ashanti, I ain't getting her bags. The artists, it's tough. Like, that's their job to travel and perform. Literally. You know I ain't I mean? been traveling. We got to get on this virtual concert sweat. That's the new sweat. Bro, that's what I, I'm waiting. Concert. Wait, when's yours? Mine is this Friday. I'm going to tell y'all first. This Friday. Okay, and it's, okay. it's barely a virtual concert. It might be a movie. It's it's ridiculous. It's out of this. I saw you tweet. I saw you tweet something like, yo, after y'all see this, y'all going to call me like movie director. You said something like, yo. The independent filmmaker. There you go. I need it. It's like a... Whew. The thing is... So when I first started seeing these virtual concerts, the way that they were filmed made you feel like you were in an empty room. It's very wide shots and uh, 
the the way that the stage is set up, even the angle, it's kind of like giving you a vibe, like you're it's trying to give you the at a concert feel. And you can't fake that. You can't fake being at an event because you're looking at your computer. But what you can do is you can kind of create this super interpersonal relationship when you shoot inset and make it feel like like a movie, like tight shots, never really feeling too far away from the artist, having the audio mix feel like a studio album. And that's just that's just the basis criteria from when you're getting a chance to rap a virtual concert. Mm. But this one that I filmed, uh, Chef's Kiss. It's a little movie. It's a little movie. <laughs> and where, where and how do people get it? How are people gonna watch it? That part I'm gonna announce on the internet. That part okay. I gotta say. Okay. But I will tell you guys it's this Friday. This Friday. Friday at getting time. we're getting at a night. chance, a chance evening entertainment extravaganza. Extravaganza. And it's a little it's a little holiday themed. I'll give you guys that too. It has to be. You I'm just like got, you just it. put out you know, the gift that keeps on giving. Yes, sir. Now now you did tell us early in this convo, you said there's a part two and a part three. Mm-hmm. Are we gonna get a, a prelude to <laughs> part two on Friday too? <laughs> I can't say too much. All right, all right, I could just right, say right. we're not done. December is a whole month. Christmas is a whole thing. And so it's not over yet. But okay. Friday, there's a lot of cool stuff that's going to be happening. Yo, now, Chance, so you, when, how far away are we from Chance the Rapper going full Clark Griswold and starring as dad in a family Christmas comedy? Who's Clark Griswold? Clark Gr- Griswold? Do you know who that is, Ebro? Clark Griswold? <laughs> you don't know. Wait, you don't know National Lampoon? I don't know what that is. You don't chance, know Chance, Chance, Chevy chance. Chase, National Lampoon. Oh, I know Chevy Chase. Oh yeah, he did. I'm actually National never Lampoon Vacation, that. Christmas. You never watch Christmas Vacation or Vacation? Wait, but is is uh We could change this. your life today. Your no, life listen, could change is, today. This could, is Van Wilder a National Lampoon? Yes, yes. but like it's like I was born in 1993. Like I don't know. That's real. Uh, that's real. That's real. I, I mean, it's real, that. Jace. But, now, but <laughs> this is chance. This is important. I mean, first of all, I want you to know. No, but, one that, thing. but there's probably a lot of black kids that ain't up on. No, no, Griswold. Okay, never seen it. This is Chance the Rapper. Chance is a, a man who knows so many different things. Now, two I've things. Seen a lot of film. Never seen. Vacation. So, Chance, number one, I love you, and number two, you make me sick. I'm disgusted I'm sorry. right now. I'm sorry. Now, I'm gonna. <laughs> you could be when you see Clark Griswold. You'll understand what I'm saying because he's he's this incredible goof. You have to watch just the first three. A first mm. vacation, European vacation, Christmas vacation. That's really the whole thing. But why you're perfect is that he's like this cool dude, but he's a complete goof. And I really think there's a lane with your love of Christmas to be so this wait, cool, what's the goof part? goofy dad. What's the goof part? The fact that he loves Christmas so much? Yeah, it's just like yeah, it's, the, it's in your dadding. No. You know, I, here's 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 what I want to do, and I will also say this on you guys' show because it's in the words. I want to write and direct the Black Home Alone because we don't have one yet, and we Make should, it. and it should be filmed in Chicago just like it was written in Chicago and filmed in Chicago by John Hughes. I have the script up here. I just need a little bit of kashish. Just a little. Bit. <laughs> I'm not, I don't got to be in the movie. Yo, there, there, there's a movie company watching this right now. They're ready to go. Yeah. Especially, and, and just, especially after they see direct. your directorial debut On this Friday. Friday. You this Friday, my directorial debut. Check it out. You'll be very surprised. I'm actually going to send you guys both something so you guys can be hyped for it. Because it's very, I'm excited. Ridiculous. How long, Can you tell us how long the show is roughly? Is it like a couple it's hours? An hour. An hour. This is my first hour special. All my other ones have been 25 minutes. This one is an hour long, so you can... Sit back with the fam, not the little little itty bitties, but like probably like your your Pre-teens. twelve year old cousins up, and uh, and I I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Now, for the now chance we got to talk about the return which you added to the uh, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, the gift bringer. The three... <laughs> yeah, that was hard. That yeah. so you know about smooth the hustler then. I do know a little bit about Smooth the Hustler. I didn't, I wasn't I actually thinking about that song, but I think my mom used to play 
um, that specific joint that he has with uh, the other guy. What what's the? Uh, uh, it's trigger the gambler. And trigger the gambler. Yeah. Smooth the hustle. Yeah. Is that I broken language? Broken language yeah. part two. Yep. Broken language. Yeah. I. It's so crazy because I. I made the song. At the beginning, like I told you, I, me and me and Jeremiah working on part three, and we we're like, "Oh yeah, we're uh, you know making a bunch of songs." And I'm like, "We were in separate rooms, also." And so I was like, as opposed to usually when we're in the same room, we're just going back and forth on the same track. I had that beat, I pulled it up, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna just do some rapidy raps." And uh, you know, obviously Jay got sick, so I had to kind of just like, I didn't want to. I felt like if I was sick, he would still get the project put out and maybe just like me put out two extra songs by himself but i feel like it's kind of weird to use a song that's not fully finished and mm -hmm. approved by somebody else so i had to like you know use songs that just had me on them so i had that the return joint and i was like let me add a few more bars on it do a little music video and drop that joint and the, the streets was on fire yeah <laughs> <laughs> it caught, yo it caught me oh, slipping i was like i was like oh okay Okay, Christmas, you know, move the hustler. I'm a I'm a rapper's rapper, you know. I'll, I'll put a few I'll put a few punch lines. In there. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the goofy part. Dude. See, that's and, what I mean. Uh, that's that Clark Griswold. Yeah, huh? that, I would do just just not to dwell back on that old question. If somebody wanted to make me a dad in a movie, I'm 27 though. That's the only thing. It's like I have the dad vibes because I'm a a fucking father of two. That's it, which, though. It's all about the vibe. I, I was looking back. I think, Ebro, when you go back and look at the original Vacation, like 1980, yo, Chevy Chase was only like 33 years old. I don't know about that. We Chevy think of Chase those. Been, we he's think like of 90 people, now. Let me see. I'm going to tell you right now how he old he was. He might have been in his 40s. Who I cares? think he was in his 40s. Who cares? I was just looking at the cover the other day for the Christmas Vacation. I know the movies that you're talking about. I just never sat down and watched. Well, since we on hip-hop real quick, while he looks that up, 40, yeah. We on this hip hop and you and, and you you got in and smooth the hustler bag. Shout to smooth the hustler and trigger the gambler. Shout out the um, this return piece. Uh, have you tell us where you're at? What you're seeing with the this uh, chance the rapper doubt that is out here? Because there's a lot of chance the rapper doubt these days. I'm sure you're seeing it. You yeah. got you've got you your Lion King guy. You've gotten yeah. to this level of the game. Your last album, people didn't love it completely enough. The, the they are throwing rocks at the throne. They are coming. The internet is coming for the tear down. What is Chance's response? Because this is part of the hip hop game here. Oh yeah, it's just be yo. You just gotta. You just gotta. Gotta be me. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm looking at the Zoom camera. It's just a. Uh, I think it's a it's a cool thing because I that's how I've always worked. Like, yeah, I, everybody doesn't remember, but when I was when I was making uh, what is it called, acid rap, I had people calling me a weirdo. New York rappers was calling me a weirdo because I was rapping about weirdo acid. rapper. Yeah, you know what I mean. When I made Coloring Book, I had people calling me a Jesus rapper. When I made Surf, they were saying that I was going the wrong way, I need to make my solo project. So the best thing, the reason why the return works so well is because I have doubters. You gotta have doubters. When everyone you get to, when you get to, you know, up there, then it's like nothing surprises people anymore. But when you're, you know, when there's always somebody that's willing to hate or tell you that something is not good, it's like, then it, it creates the conversation. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the return is out. I'm happy to put out some more music. I'm just really, I'm just really, really good at rapping. So regardless <laughs> of what happens, I'm gonna always have that, you know, to fall back on, you know. And if that doesn't work, then I could perform my old raps. And if that don't work, I could direct someone else's raps. You know, it's gonna work out though. Um, I, I, I like that. By the this. way, sidebar, I like this confidence, and I like you leaning into the to the naysayers. This is a good time for you. Oh yeah, it's a good you time. Have to, you know, they're, they're your Chance has fan. always been Chance. You've always been one to to remind people if they forget that you can rap. Oh yeah, there's, it's just I mean, there's nobody that can rap like me. See, and I that, told you that's a cool thing. That's a cool thing to have. You know, <laughs> so I, this, I, I, I can't rap like a lot of other people though too. But can't nobody rap like me. Let's let's. I want to ask you this though. 
Yes. How much of that holy record did you write with Justin Bieber? That's I didn't I didn't write any of Justin's parts, so I won't take credit for that. That's uh damn, what's his name? John Bellion, a... Justin, and somebody else. Oh, I John Bellion? John that's John Bellion? Uh-huh. It it turns I think that that was a song that John had made like a few years ago. And Yo, he kind of like would play online or at tours and shit and stuff. And then um and then Justin was a fan and he was like, Yo, let's like flip some of the lyrics, and then they did. And then he hit me up to do my verse on the song. But the acoustic version though, the re-release, it's in the charts. That that joint, that's that's produced by me and my friends. But uh but the original version, yeah, I just wrote my verse on it. It's so cool making songs with Justin Bieber, man. I've been in the top ten for like eight weeks or something like that. I'm not used to this. Part. That's why I'm talking shit like this. Like, I could say I'm the best rapper all day when I'm in the top ten, baby. You got to look at my face. Put me on that pop radio. <laughs> well, by the way, you guys have had a lot of hits at this point. They're all really yeah. good. You, you guys, Khaled, Quavo. That's also a whole thing. Nah, that, I'm the one. That's almost diamond. I'm the I'll one. Be is the 28th artist to go diamond, yo. I'm the one's one of your biggest yeah, moments yeah. ever. It's gig- it might be the biggest. It's gigantic. Yo, Chance is mad fidgety right now during this interview. Like, he just want to spit bars. Like, I wish we could throw a beat on right now. You see how he keeps rocking back and forth? Up. Yo, he's rocking back and forth right now. Like, we need to throw a beat on for him. Man, um, I, I think it's the coffee, yo. I mean, the, uh, the refresher. I, 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 people don't understand that when you're a rapper... They try and make us seem like we're lazy and stuff like that. We'd be waking up to do 8 a.m. interviews and stuff. Like, a rapper would stay up. I was in the studio till 2 a.m. last night doing editing. And now I'm back on my back on my interview swag. I'm a personality and a problem. Um, The uh, the politics, let's get to it. Um, okay. what, why'd you say, oh, God, man? Because the other hard question was that the, the, the chance tweets that time around the Kanye thing. I mean, well, first of all, I'm sorry, my condolences. It didn't work. He was your candidate at least for a second, for like Ooh. a two seconds. Was he my Kanye. candidate or was I just not going for everybody trying to make Joe Biden the black people candidate? Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. That that could be. I didn't. What are you trying to say? Chance endorsed Trump? No, Kanye. Oh. I never said Chance endorsed Trump. I'm not a oh. psychopath. That's his yeah, friend. No, no, no. Listen, Kanye was running for president himself. Yeah. And, right. And, 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 I believe was getting propped up by Republicans to try to siphon off votes for Biden. As a matter of fact, Kanye was deliberate about saying that's what it was. But I don't think Kanye ever said that that's what it was. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Know, by the way, his- Chance, thank you for calling Ebro. I don't think he ever deliberately said that either. He didn't say that. But I think what is what is a factual thing is that uh, all the states that he got like over a thousand votes and were red states. So if anybody, if he was taking votes from anybody, he was taking votes from Trump. Mm. But at the end of the day, I think what's great is that Trump is not the president anymore. That's a fact though. So we all agree on that. (laughs) We all agree that, that that was a bad time. Right. And so I think white America should let black people do whatever they want for a long time after that whole Trump thing. And we could vote for Kanye. We could not vote. We could vote for Barack Obama. We could literally do well, whatever that's just we, wasting we a vote. do whatever we want to do because you guys owe us an apology for another four hundred years. <laughs> did we get the did we get the first apology? Yeah, when's the first when did you guys get the first one? There hasn't been there hasn't been an apology. The apology was Joe Biden, but that's not a good That's not an apology. apology. We gotta get to this reparations, my guy. We gotta get to this money. What is it? What is it? HR forty. HR forty. Yeah, that's the research yeah, okay. project. Let's, I, I need to do my research on that specific bill. But I'm, you know, I'm all about it. Well, the, it's, it's really a research project about how, you know, what's due, how it would happen, et cetera, et cetera. There's got to be a lot more work done there, for sure. So it's still yeah. in the early stages. Did your, Chance, did your dad, how'd your dad feel, though, when you, when you had that moment where you were like, hey, basically, you don't need to force feed us Joe Biden. And the timing of it was, it was at a time <laughs> when a lot of people were kind of, Checking Joe yeah. Biden. I, I didn't love the timing of it or a lot of other people's statements. What did your pops, though, who's deeply entrenched in sort of democratic politics, think about it? He hasn't worked in politics in, I think, two or three years now. So he's been working with me since the beginning of 2019. But, but it's something that he cares about deeply, always yeah, has. It's definitely something that he cares about. I think what it was is he 
he doesn't care as much because he's like he's just happy to not work in politics anymore. <laughs> my mom, my grandmother, a lot of and it's like it's just I don't know. It's a black people thing. We gotta we're just figuring it out. But it's like, you know, we're just Oh man, it's so hard to explain, you know. But yeah, no, they were the answer is uh, if you were looking for who was like, what, the, what are you doing? It was like, it was my mom, my grandmother, and uh, and, and my wife were all like. That's a, that's a serious trifecta, by the way. Yeah, no. It's those, those, and by those, the way, and by the way Chance, Chance, let's stay right there. Shout to black women. <laughs> Shout out to black women, definitely. Shout to black women because black women have saved this country so many times. Oh, yeah. And specifically, black men, and I've said this multiple times, need to listen to black women when it comes to politics. Yeah, that's no. Fact. I did. That was my my takeaway when I when I finally fully came down off of my uh, of my Kanye Hill, or like I could never really like. I'm not a type of person that's like I don't like to say sorry really. So what I when I changed my mind, I was like my my comeback tweet was uh, I said, uh, look, man. I'm gonna just say this: just vote. Ask your mom who you, she would vote for, and vote for her. And that was me trying to say, "Hey, I'm voting for Joe Biden now." <laughs> that was I'm as close as you could get. People were like, "What? What if your mom's white and a Trump supporter?" And I was like, "All right, I quit." Okay, like, all, all right. right. This whole all election right. Is, this is not for me. But uh, yeah, man, I am glad that I'm glad that it's that it's a we're about to switch it up. I it's, isn't it such a crazy time? Doesn't it feel like? It feels like our life was like a TV show, a written TV show that was just getting crazier and crazier and crazier. And now it feels like like they just don't know what to do with the script. So they're just like adding, they're like, I guess, I guess Joe Biden wins. It's like it's like anything anything is possible. So let's just let's just ride this horse, see where it goes. Isn't the it NBA crazy how a little bit more normal? Isn't it but, crazy how quiet it is for Trump right now, though? It feels like when he like you can now go days without saying his name, which was not possible for four years. And now it's like the other day I went a couple of days and never said the name Donald Trump or heard it. Yeah, I feel like it's it's not to say it's the media, but I do feel like we we noticed for the first time how separate the two sides of media are like when i was a kid like you were mentioning my dad worked in politics when i was a kid we used to sit with fox news on all day because my dad used to have to see what fox was saying about yep. uh obama but like in the past few years like we all like we share clips of fox news saying ridiculous stuff or like you know uh you know it's just like we get more information now so so we were able to see the divide in the media and now i feel like you know, we don't, I know I'm not watching Fox News and I'm not seeing anybody post what Fox News is posting. So I don't really know what the sort, uh, not to call them the sore losers, but just. No, you can call them sore <laughs> yeah, losers. Yeah, yeah. A lot of sore losers. Like, like, I don't know what they're talking about. They could be talking about anything, but we're not really getting to, we don't want to hear their side of the story. I don't want to really hear their side of the story, but I am kind of like a little bit curious as to like. See, I'm not one of those people. I've never been that person. I don't really like if I if I think you're talking crazy talk. I'm not listening to you. You don't want to even know. I, I'm not. Call. I don't care. Like I, I've never been that type of dude that's tuning in to hear people who. And and I always go back to this. Like, look, do I think there's corruption on both sides? Do I think there's this and that on both sides? Absolutely. Do I think that there's bigger things at play? Yeah, I could do all those dances and and conspiracies with everybody. But if you going if you gonna be on the field, and pay taxes and do all that. You're going to have to figure out how to navigate this thing and help, and help it work in favor of your local community and your family as much as you possibly can and, and, and use your power. And the one thing I love the most about this last little cycle was how black people clearly hold the power in this nation for these, for these swing states. Milwaukee, shout to Milwaukee, shout to, I mean, look, Chicago, shout to Detroit, Philly. Shout to Atlanta, big time. Like, the, when it came down to them days, when we're going to be seeing this, this is going to be the thing now. These battlegrounds, you're going to see these black cities are going to be the deciding factor. I'm into this. Yeah. 
the inner city, yo. That's where all the that's where all the black people live. We all live in cities surrounded by rural towns with hella white people in them. And then, you know, and then like the head the most heavy heavily populated places. I usually we're all the and that's what won the election in the end. That was that came and we and the way it played out, we got to literally see it exactly that way. Like those are the, also the votes that came in last, so it was like such a great, you know, version of getting to literally see. Boom! Once those black, once those votes came through, it was over. That was it. I don't want to take too much credit for this stuff. Let me just say this real quick. Chance, you did a great job. Black people, black people we did a great job. <laughs> He's about to troll it. white people. Let you know what I'm saying. Like I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, so that like you understand the joke and the seriousness of it. <laughs> you don't want to because you don't want too much credit. Because if things go left, you don't want that. You know credit. what I'm saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Is right, like, right. when it all goes, you know, left, they they're not going to be able to tell whether Peter Rosenberg is 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 a left or right guy until he unless like, they look at my social media. Yeah, unless you unless you see, you know, but but that's why I was thinking. Right, but I could hide. I could hide. You can hide. Yeah, you can just like blend in. Like when they look at us, like me and Ebro look like we voted for Joe Biden <laughs> based on the rhetoric, right? Right. So right, right. I think black people, we should, you know, we can know in our hearts, but we should let like you know what I'm saying, just let them carry it a little bit. Like I seen this really cool thing. I went to one of the marches, and I and they had built this wall. This wall of white people in front of 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 all the all the organizers and and protesters, like you know, like that. And not to say that these white folks weren't organizers, but like you know, they're black organizers. But it was basically like people. the police won't attack us because we white. Right. Yeah. They were using the privilege in the front, and so I would just like them to do the same thing with this Joe Biden shit and just you know rock a Joe Biden shirt for the next four years if you're white and just. Let it be known and be that shield so that so the black people, it starts to become more of like it wasn't them. You know what I mean? I feel you. <laughs> Chance is basically saying you don't want black people to be targets. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's uh, mainly, but it's also very serious. Right. Um, Chance. Chancellor, Merry Christmas, bro. Merry Christmas, my guys. It was good to see y'all, man. And happy Hanukkah, Peter. Hey, yo, bro has Hanukkah, half a Hanukkah, Hanukkah too, Hanukkah, man. My mom's I, I actually used to know a lot of stuff about Hanukkah because at our school we were like a multi ethnic. Yo, man, you got to start saying happy Hanukkah to black folks too, man. You never know if they yeah, do. Yeah, no, I Hanukkah. know. If you get too far on this, your show will get canceled, though. So let's nah, uh... <laughs> nah, nah. We good. We good. We Ebro's good. half. Ebro has half a Hanukkah. He gets four candles. I, I talk about I talk about Israel and Jews all the time. Don't worry about. You talk it. about black Jews. I talk about, of course. What? I am let's one. get into it right now. Let's let's spit our lit. No, I'm just kidding. You want yo? If you want the smoke, <laughs> let me know. We can get into the into the Shemites. <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? No, it's not no, a problem. No. Shout out to my brother Nick Cannon. You want to get <laughs> We need that wild and out season 17. <laughs> yo. <laughs> yo, Nick Cannon went all the way out there, boy. Hey, whatever. This is a pre-tape too, right? So if we have to, you know, we could. <laughs> Nick Cannon went all the way out there, and then his comeback of the other direction. Yo, he was in Hebrew school. I yo, thought he was about yo, to wear a yarmulke. Yo, me and Rosenberg was like, yo, he had to sit down with a rabbi. This is crazy. Yo, he might have to actually convert, and he's going to have to convert and start wearing a yarmulke. He yeah. got more Jewish than me on his apology tour. Yo, I got news for you. When you shape an entire group by their worst individuals, you're going to have some problems. Yeah. No matter who the fuck you're talking about. Right. It'll get tough for you. It'll get tough for you. It'll get tough when for you. you one of the greatest shows in history, Wild and Out. And I ever tell you guys like how much I valued Wild and Out? I, 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 like well, I, I can tell because you just described it as one of the greatest shows. I talked to you guys a lot about SNL and like the Grammys being like the thing. And I feel like I might have told you guys this before, but like from childhood, it was like SNL, the Grammys, Wild and Out, yo. No really? cap. Yeah, because it broke so many stars, like so many people that were comedians that were not comedians, be, uh, or they were comedians, yeah, but they weren't. Cat Williams, uh, Corey Holcomb, uh, Afion Crockett, uh, Mikey Day, who went to SNL. Yeah, like uh, all these, all these comedians when I was a kid, and then all these artists and comedians that weren't super, like the Kanye West. That was like one of the first times I saw him on TV, like doing something that wasn't just 
you know, performing or doing a random interview. It was like him on this, you know, game show. And Kevin Hart, when he, when right after I'm a grown little man. So I used to just watch the show and be like, I want to be on this one day. And I got, I got two belts in the, in the, in the end of it. Like, uh, so you, cher- you cherish those while and out belts more than you ch- cherish any other award. I would say it's up there with the grandmas, no cap, just because. And I think also people that have been on the show that may not have a Grammy would probably tell you the same thing. No, that's the like, thing, right? Well, and I also to Grammy, what you're saying, I feel really good having this while and out. What you're it's saying is, is it represents culture though, in a real yeah. way. That's what you're it saying. It represents a person who made a black dude who made this idea, right? And made this hip hop improv fact. show that did not exist prior to it, and and just gave a lot of people opportunities. Uh, so I always like appreciated the show when I got on it. I knew that it was exactly what I thought it was. And, uh, and yeah, it, it is the culture. It has been for a long time. Well, Nick Cannon seems to be okay. He'll be fine. He's got so much money. I just love the cool. show. Well, no, I'm just saying even on the other side, like he still has his radio program. He's still doing his thing. And I saw him doing sit-ups the other day on his Instagram. <laughs> All right. Well, so. good, man. As long as you're doing the sit-ups. No, he was doing. He was working out. You know, Nick Cannon. No, he always, used to I've add. seen his training videos. I follow Nick too. Yeah, he does like he once. Does once you play. see him doing bar dips, you're like, ah, oh, he good. <laughs> He'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> he good. Yo, Chancellor. Yo, Have, y'all go get that Merry Christmas. The gift, the gift that keeps on giving, and pay attention for Chance to uh, let us know where to tune in Friday to his directorial Friday. debut, his independent film slash virtual performance, and I think. We're going to get some new material because he dodged that question nice and, and swiftly. Tune in Friday. Chance. Friday. Hey. Thanks, Chancellor. One second. Hey, I love you guys, man. Love. Appreciate y'all. Love you, yeah. bud. Take care, man. Y'all on the flip. Peace. Peace. Yo, he hit us with the Arsenio Hall piece.